this video I'll be going over the Salesforce admin certification maintenance spring 19 uh, everything that is inside of the what's new for spring 19 so not the challenge which will be handled in another video so let's jump into it if you didn't know how to find these and go through it then uh, you know just search um, for spring 19 and the admin certification you'll find it and make sure to read through all of this I'm just gonna go over the main parts for you guys here um, so in customizing, customize the full sales process, this is for Salesforce Essentials, which you'll see it's, it says it here. There's actually nothing we can actually do in this Salesforce Essential. If you don't know, it's the $25 a month lowest tiered Salesforce, uh, edition that they have out there and it's geared towards super small business, uh, as far as I understand. Um, and this basically just gives them the option to configure their leads and stages and walks them through them. Uh, if you didn't know, if you type in spring 19 in the search bar, wait for that to load, there are the release highlights. So I'm actually going to open up this tab here. Um, and if you, you know, here's for all of the different platforms. And then if you go to sales cloud, um, there should be one in here for essentials. Watch this video and I'll link to it uh, in the description of the video as well. Next, let's get down to some things that we can actually uh, see here. So joined reports, which are actually really cool, um, something that I haven't really worked with before, but we can uh, use up to five joined reports and I'll show you what one of those look like. So I'm in my um, trailhead org here and looks like I've got the opportunity joined report uh, already. So a couple things about joined reports or well, I'll show you guys what it looks like right now. So on this column here, we have uh, closed one opportunities. And in this section, we have closed loss opportunities. So these are two separate reports uh, inside of one. So I'll go back to edit and show you what that looks like. So we can edit each of these reports individually. They can all have their own columns. Let's take some of these out. We see it edits, you know, this section's for the closed loss one on the right. And then there's a closed one. Um, they can each have their own filters, which is pretty cool. We're seeing in here. And then we can add up to five of these. So if we do add block, um, we can add any object or any report that has related fields um, as far as I saw. So in here I picked tasks and there's no uh, common fields will come from account. Okay, account and user. Um, let me try to think of a report type. Uh, if I do history, history is probably going to come up, but price books would have one. Properties user so i've i've run into cases um where the actual like we're not able to add that specific report type because there's no way to link it so if there were no owners then we wouldn't be able to add the users but anyways you'll you'll run into that and you'll know the situation that you're in when you when you see that um right here i just added another report block and um you know we can we can start doing filtering and everything on that specific one so then when we run this report we can see everything about it this might be good for, you know, multi-level um, dashboards or reports that you guys run where you had to maybe look at before when you had to look at two different reports at the same time, you can pull them all in to be, you know, on the same one. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we have removing account team in Lightning Experience. So uh, this actually was not, where are my accounts? I've added a lot of tabs here. Here it is. Um, so if you had predefined account teams, um, when you, let's say we added a default account team, let's see if anybody pops in. Cool. Um, if we click down into this carrot, the extended menu, we also have this new option to remove all members. So before we had to go through this one by one and delete them. Now we can go here and uh, remove everybody. So that's uh, pretty handy for anybody with account team set up. Uh, next up, we have managing your workspaces and new uh, sub tab options. So this is for the sales console. So I'm going to switch into console uh, service console. It's for any of the consoles, any of the consoles with tabs. Um, switching into the, my sales console and let's um, showcase some of this stuff here. So with the carrot uh, and the extended menu down here, we have a few different options. Refresh tab was there before, but we also have pin tab. We have unpin tab, customize. So let's say we wanted to put a name to this, a specific name like, um, you know, primary customer 
or something like that. But now you can now you can add names to your your tabs so that it's not just the default. Or you know, if you're working through this, you can you can pick something else for the name for it. Same thing, um, and you can do refreshing, closing out the tabs, and then customizing, which is pretty much just picking the name. Um, I guess you can do a different icon too. I didn't actually notice that. That is pretty slick, actually. So I'm going to save that there, and we have a brand new icon. So just for streamlining um, your process when you're going through, if you have console enabled. All right, so next up, I'm going to be going over the partner account relationships and data sharing rules. So this is something that works with your partner communities, and it actually adds a related object that you can use to um, add explicit sharing for different objects based on many different rules. It's actually um, a little bit different than sharing rules because this is on a per object basis and something that you could potentially allow um, you know, users in the system if they know and are trained on the proper solution to um, share out these records. So um, we're on an account here and basically this is a partner uh, enabled account. And we get once we enable this, we get two new sections for our account related list, which is the accounts that we're sharing from and to from it from basically is the account that wants to receive the information. So I'll go through the setup of this and really quickly, I'm logged in here as uh, Barbara in my community. And what I want to achieve as the end goal is be able to see opportunities that are related to the uh, pyramid um, there's a pyramid account in here so um, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in the setup and then I'll go or setting it up in configuration and then I'll go through all the back-end setup for it so I'm setting up um, the information based on this account relationship the from account is express which Barbara is on and then the to account is pyramid which we want to see the different information from and then the next thing is that there's all of these different uh, pick list values that we can use to um, further drill down and give relationship access on the account so um, what this one's basically doing and you'll see is I'm giving uh, opportunity access to anybody that's a distributor I'm gonna hit save on here and then if I go back into the communities we see that now uh, as I'm logged in as Barbara I actually have access to this opportunity which um, I wouldn't normally have access to you know I'm not even an owner and it's on a completely different account so the setup behind this uh, to enable it we go to community settings scroll down uh, this is where we enable it um, you cannot enable it you cannot uncheck this you know once it's done so that's the, an, an important feature or thing to note when you're evaluating using this uh, once that's enabled we get a new account relationship object the most important thing here are the different relationship types so here are all the standard ones that come out we can also create our own it's just a regular pick list um, and then to finally tie everything together uh, in there's a new sharing account relationships data sharing settings and in here this is where we define a lot of the uh, different options that will give uh, the user um, that's that's setting up the different types so here I'll go ahead and create one well actually let's view this one this is the super simple one that shares the opportunities um, so if your relationship type is distributor, you get rewrite access based on the account IDs. You can set up more complex ones that you know share all accounts that are good ratings and things like that. And when you're going through this, there's a lot of different fields that uh, you can check out when you're using this. All right, and that is um, partner relationships. And then the last one on here is the um, new relative times for macros. So macros is actually something that I'm not super uh, familiar with. Oh, it's asking me to create a macro. Let's see. I should already have one on here. Let's see if it pulls up. This page does not support macros. Let's go to cases. I'm pretty sure it's on cases. All 
Ah, here's my relative date macro. So basically what this does, I'll go into edit it. Uh, while this loads up is it, it, it selects or now you can use, you know, relative dates. So five, uh, a week from today or five days later, minute from now, uh, things like that, uh, in relative dates to set up macro functions. So I'll go into the builder just so you can see what this looks like. Um, I did the relative date, the value two days, you know, from now you can, um, select from these, these different options that you have in here. And basically what this does is, uh, once we're on the case tab, it creates a new task, um, with the subject spring 19 and it sets the, uh, due date, sorry, for two days from now. So I'm actually going to run this. Oop, can't see it working, but, um, there we go. Our new task was created. If we click into it, we see that the due date is uh, five, uh, five eight. The current date is five five. And I think that's it. Yeah. So I've completed this one. Um, stay tuned for the hands-on uh, certification, which is going to be the lightning pages. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, check out my other Salesforce videos and be sure to subscribe. If you're looking to take your Salesforce knowledge to the next level, go to salesforcementor.com. There you can find training material and learn best practices to master Salesforce.